What's this, you ask? It's Tactical Insight on a Sunday. Wow, lucky all of you. You thought this weekend couldn't get any better. And we're here to give you tactical insight. And if you're lead judges, you get an earlier night than normal. How lucky are you, mate? <laughs> welcome back to Graham. Welcome back to everyone. Um, everyone. Firstly, the like, if you do enjoy this video, do join us for Forever Arsenal later tonight. There's gonna be a live special. And of course, why we did this early? Because Arsenal play Porto on Tuesday night. So look out for all the preview and all the sort of build up to that on Monday, which is why we had to talk about this a little bit earlier. I'm delighted we are, because fresh, off the win, that's when we're recording it, a little bit of a secret there. We haven't come in on a Sunday, don't worry, Robbie doesn't drag me in on a Sunday. But um, it's it was a really good win. It was a last gasp win, sort of. I mean, obviously 85th minute, not quite the very, very end. Another 30 minutes of football were played after that, Graham. But this time, unlike the seven, where we were just blitz, 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 this time it was about finding a way, and we did. It was. Arsenal were far from their best tonight, James. Uh, uh, had a lot of the ball, a lot of the territory but struggled to create and uh, we're indebted in the end to uh, a player who's been under much scrutiny this season, yep. Kai Havertz, uh, popping up with the headed winner from a Ben White assist to get over Arsenal over the line and send Arsenal to the top of the league. Yep, massive, massive moment for Kai Havertz. Not the first time he's done it against Brentford. Um, not the first time he's, let's say, sealed the points. I mean, you could even look at goals against Brighton where we're slightly under the cosh and 1-0 up. He gets a second to get it secured. But let's go through it. Um, the match stats. Arsenal 17 shots to Brentford's nine with 72% of the possession. More passes completed and a better XG. But what I will say about this game is the, the stats still look 17 shots to nine. But actually, Brentford were more of a threat, especially in the second half going forward. It's no surprise our XG only totaled to 1.3 and that we had our XG of 1.05. I think this is what annoys me when people belittle the XG stat. Oh, what a load of nonsense. Well, actually, for me, the nonsense stat here is a 17 shots to nine. That makes it look like we sort of totally dominated. We did to a degree, but they had good moments where Ramsdale was called in two saves. And actually, bar the couple goals, we weren't really testing Flecken that much for our dominance. And I think the XG for once, not for once, but really in this situation, captures the, the game state more than shots and other possession other stats yeah so i think that we only had five shots on target to their four i think that's yeah, more you're telling right. yeah so although we had more shots we only had five on target they had four on target um, and ramsdale was called in to uh play in the second half to make crucial saves after his first half error which i know we're going to talk about um i thought that we just struggled to create i thought brentford set up with a back five james mm -hmm. uh that we knew they were going to play uh, a five three two uh, they play three centre-backs, two yep. uh, wing-backs. Uh, they have three hard-working midfielders and Tony and Wisser up front. The big changes for Arsenal, which I think impacted the game, was the changes we had to make. Yeah. Obviously, David Raya uh, couldn't play because it's against his uh, parent club. Um, so he couldn't play. Ramsdale came in, uh, which you know I know we're going to talk about uh, yeah, we will talk how about it, it unfolded when Aaron came into the team. And obviously, the, I thought Gabriel Martinelli uh, mm. couldn't start either after uh, leaving, uh, being, uh, he was walking around the ground tonight on, on yeah. crutches, I understand, and he, he got taken off in the previous game at Sheffield United with a, a cut foot, so he couldn't play. Trossard came in, and I thought in that game, in this game, I thought the, those two changes did influence the way the game played out. I thought yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, the big moment at the end of the first half where Ramsdale makes the mistake that got Brentford back into the game, but I did think we missed Gabriel Martinelli in this game down that left-hand side. Um, I thought that uh, Trossard, who, who's a very good, fine footballer and has been brilliant for us in the false nine role, doesn't offer us in that wide left area uh, quite the dynamism and the athleticism and the running power that Gabriel Martinelli offers. And I thought we didn't give him the ball in good situations apart from once where Ramsar did a, a really great yeah. throw out to put him in a good position, which obviously couldn't make the most of. Um, I thought so much so in that first half, I thought him and Havertz were switching positions a lot. Yeah. I thought Trossard was coming more central and Havertz was drifting out to the left. So consequently, Brentford, who set up in a back five, uh, were comfortable defending against Arsenal because we didn't have the balance of the yeah, left-hand totally side agree. and the right-hand side. And all our attacks, I thought, pretty much in the first half and the second half, went down our right-hand side. Odegaard still building the play from deep, but it was that little triangle of uh, Odegaard, uh, Saka and White, which was our main attacking weapon. So I thought we were 
more predictable in this game and Brentford were able to get their uh, wing backs and their defensive midfielders back into position knowing that we wouldn't switch it quickly mm -hmm. to down the left hand side Kivor still played on the left hand side of course but he, he can't offer on the outside of Trossard yeah, I agree. Uh, what he could uh, say if, uh, a left back like say Zinchenko was playing so I think the two changes Arsenal made didn't help our balance in the game and obviously stopped us I think from playing the type of football we have been playing more recently. Yeah, I totally agree. And I know you're all screaming at the TV or, the, or your phone or whatever you're watching it on. What about the attack and defensive stats? Because I know you will obviously miss them. Here they are. Of course, we had 69 final third entry, 63 deep, deep touches, 36 zone 14 touches to their eight, and an 80.5% field tilt, which again speaks to the domination that Arsenal, or dominance, probably dominance as well, that Arsenal still had in terms of territory and possession and always being the team on the front foot. Just felt Brentford did throw some punches our way as well. They tackled us more, they intercepted us more. One interception all game for us, one that tells you that our pressing wasn't quite there. Although 9.7 uh, passes per defensive action show that Arsenal did still have all the right in intentions to try and press and take the game to Brentford. Now you've touched on quite a lot there. And we're going to talk about all of it. The right hand side, the left hand side, Aaron Ramsdale, the lot. Start with the positives because it leads to a goal, leads to two goals in fact. Arsenal's right hand side, we're going to go to the tactical pad because you're right, we made changes in this game. The big one was Trossard and there was something wrong with the left hand side, we'll talk about it. But on the right hand side, we saw these three, Erdegaard, let's draw some lines, Erdegaard, Saka and White really connect once again. Erdegaard has played a little bit more of a free role recently where we've seen him dropping in a little bit. You know, Rice has dropped wide and sometimes been Erdegaard dropping in the space. Sometimes you've had almost White, you know, being that underlapper at times. But as the game went on and we needed a goal, we found Saka, White and Erdegaard in these areas combining a lot, didn't we? We did. I think uh, Brentford, uh, we had to do that, of course, because Brentford had five uh, defenders defending against our five lanes of attack. So yeah. I think we needed a, a six uh, lane up high. I think Ben White was playing, I thought, more inside a bit in the first half, and that's how yeah. he, he set up the assist for Declan Rice's uh, header with a pinpoint cross. That was from Saka laying the ball back to him. He was more inside, and he put the brilliant cross, uh, brilliant pinpoint header cross well over to Rice. Declan Rice. So we made a, I thought, a, um, a, a reasonable start, but we were struggling to break them down. So the goal came at a good time, uh, and I thought that he was up high in those sort of positions quite a lot in the game. Um, more inside in the first half and then second half, uh, as we saw with the winner, he was getting on the outside more of Saka, I thought. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, Ben White picks up this area here. We just go back to the tactical pad where, you know, he just, well, maybe it's a bit more here, let's say. And, you know, Declan Rice makes that brilliant run sort of into the box and heads it in at that kind of near post for Fleck and very difficult to defend. He's almost guided it as much as he has sort of got any power on it. Um, the kind of run that Xhaka was making last yeah. season, he is really evolving into that left eight role. Talk to me about the rest of the right-hand side though, because they clicked so much more than the left. Um, for me, the thing I kept spotting was how often these three, which I've just you know highlighted, Erdegaard, White, uh, Saka, how much they alternating. So the standard shape is White more tucked in with Erdegaard here and Saka hugging the touchline. But at times, Erdegaard hugs the touchline so that Saka can sit in and make those spaces. At times, Saka is almost playing as a striker to occupy a Collins so that Erdegaard gets a little bit of free roam and then White can go around the outside. And we see that with the second goal. Yeah, we did. Um, I thought, in the, to be fair, I thought Bukayo Saka has been absolutely on fire over the last few weeks. I didn't think he was quite so good tonight, I'll I be agree. honest with you. Um, and I thought that maybe um, they just defended really well against him. Um, I think we, we did pretty much what we do in build-up a lot. We, we saw evidence that we moved to the box midfield in build-up at times. You saw uh, pl the fluidity in the shape, Jorginho getting forward. You saw Gabriel getting forward up high. At times so, Kivio were inverted. Even Kivio yeah. inverted as well. So we did sort of like, I think, try and be as fluid as we normally are. I just think it's one of those nights where things didn't quite click as well. Yeah, and I, I think it's that. funny how when you make just one little tweak to a team and, and Martinelli coming out, it does have a bearing on it. I thought the right hand side was the side we went to most, uh, but I didn't think, and although it delivered us the, the two goals, uh, I didn't think it was, you know, working brilliantly. Um, I thought, uh, you know, as well as it has done in the past. It I was think. our best side, yet it wasn't 
as productive and efficient as we know it can yeah, be. Yeah, I do like that we're adding more tools to the way we attack down the right. I mean, I saw Saka very central at times today. He was often picking up, making runs down the left channel as well, which is great, and having more of a free role. I've wanted this for a long time. And then because Saka, the way he plays for England, I don't give Gareth Southgate credit yeah. for a lot of things. In fact, his use of Ben White is probably one of those things. But the one thing Southgate does get right, for me, is his use of Saka in really central positions because... He can play make, he can run beyond, he can get in the pockets. And he's got this new move he's unlocked where he, he gets in the, between the sort of centre-back and full-back and then he asks for the ball. And the way he's positioned his body, it looks like he's going to take a touch to set himself. But he always lets it roll, very Jack Wilshire-esque. He lets it roll across his body. Yeah. The next thing you know, without even touching the ball, he's turned the defender and he's ready to whip it across goal. That's just another move he's added to his many that we've seen and I thought he had some fun with that especially in the first half. Yeah, He had one great chance as well, he had a shot which he didn't get over and it went over the bar. I thought he did some good things in the first half, I didn't think he was his normal dynamic self. I think um, he's set such high standards this season, he's been brilliant with goals and assists mm -hmm. in the last few games but I thought the run came to an end tonight in terms of uh, goal contribution to goal involvement. So still had some good moments, I just didn't think um, it's a bit like I thought that we weren't as good as we have been. You know, yeah. you have to credit Brentford who defended really well. I think they did, yeah. They did defend really well, um, and and obviously they took a lot of time out of the game with a lot of their time wasting as well. Which Forty nine minutes. Yeah, they literally one. Yeah, yeah they the literally sort of did their best to sort of like break the play up as much as they could. So I didn't think we were at our best tonight. Uh, in even on the right hand side, I think in the game against Sheffield United, I know we've sort of like looked at the numbers and we were sort of like more evenly spread between the right and the left-hand side in terms of the, we went down the left-hand side and the right-hand side on a fairly equal sort of like uh, level. But tonight, I thought f over 40% of it, uh, we looked at the numbers, didn't we? we went down that right-hand side and less than 20% down the left-hand side. That told me the left-hand side wasn't, without Martinelli, is not a side that was, um, that we were, wanting to rely on as much without Martinelli, I thought. No, I that, and I thought yeah. the number of times Trossard got in some good areas and he checked back a lot and played the ball back. You know, he hasn't got that ability to run on beyond. And I thought even Declan Rice was making one or two raking runs in the inside left eight position uh, and looked better in that area than um, Trossard did when he was out wide left. Uh, but I think we were heavily dependent on that right-hand side. I thought that Kai Havertz made we're going to talk about his performance. I thought this, he really has stepped up in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you remember he scored the winner at their stadium early in the season that got us over the line, a late goal at Brentford. I thought his ability to stretch their defence, running behind, his ability to never give up a lost cause was, I think, the main thing I took out of the attack, the way we attacked in this game. Uh, and it was, uh, I think, fitting that he headed in the winner because I think if one player deserved to score the winning goal tonight, it was him for his work rate, uh, he's a combination of a centre forward, a false nine. He can drop in into that box midfield. He yep. can come short. He's a combination of Inketi and Jesus combined for me almost yeah. at times. And he, he's that aerial threat as well. And he took his goal brilliantly. Yeah, well, a six foot four, he scored a few headers for us. And this was another one we have recreated it. So let's take it to the tactical pad because everything which have been you know going on about the last five minutes, you can see in this goal from Kai Havertz's presence and ability to get into the box to the combinations down the right-hand side. And here it's Ben White as an overlapper again. He's not sort of sat tucked in to get the ball whipped to the back post. This time he is sat... Well, not say so. he's out in a wide area. Now, Erdegaard attempted the ball into the box. It comes out, but they recycle possession. It goes back to White, and then here is White. He gives it to Erdegaard, who takes the touch. And that touch, by the way, from... Be Let's take it back. This touch here from Erdegaard, just that little drag, just buys him time to wait for the space. So he's timed... He, he's, he's in sync with Ben White's run. And when it's rolled into Ben White, it picks out a lovely cross. And there's Kai Havertz in, in actually quite a lot of space. He just makes sure to get it on target and off the keeper into the back of the net. And Arsenal go 2-1 up very, very late in the, uh, in the game. And of course, it was enough to, uh, to get the job done. Yeah, I thought at the start of the second half, we started the second half really well. Put them under pressure, forced a load of corners. But I thought they'd weathered that storm, Brentford. Yeah. And they'd created, as we said, we saw in the numbers, they, they had four attempts on target. Yeah. Uh, and... Those two efforts that Aaron Ramsdale stayed in the second saved in the second half, they came into the game with their own moments uh, going forward in the second half. So they were a threat uh, on the counter-attack and uh, Tony had one effort from 40 yards, which he did well to tip round. I thought 
I thought the game was petering out to 1-1. Yeah. I, I was in the stadium tonight and I just got that feeling that, that just like the game last season when it, we got the 1-1 draw when they scored a goal where they forgot to draw the lines, of course, yeah, so it shouldn't yeah, have been allowed. Yeah. But I thought, is this game going to be another one that bites us in the arse? So <laughs> crucial to get over the line tonight. And I thought it was petering out to a 1-1. And I yeah. thought it looked like Brentford had weathered the storm yeah. until we created that one bright moment and Havertz took his chance. Totally agree. Now, there's more great stuff on Ben White. We've got to show you his numbers. He won 100% of his tackles. Had a very good pass accuracy, as you can see. Completing 63 passes, three chances created with two assists from five crosses attempted as well. But I think what really tells this is from uh, Mark R. Stats. Go follow him on X, Twitter, whatever you call it, at Mark R. Stats, where you can see where Ben White ranks for progression via pass, but also progression via carry. He was the player more than any other on the pitch for Arsenal who was dragging the team up the pitch via his passing, via his carrying, and just through sheer determination. He was the one trying to force the issue for Arsenal the most. And of course, talk about Kai Havertz's goal. You had him as man of the match. Let's just give you some numbers around Kai Havertz at Arsenal. He's played 38 games, scoring nine goals in that time for Arsenal, which I don't think is a bad return because he's played a lot of that time in midfield. In terms of games as a striker, he's played seven times with six goal contributions. That's six goals and assists combined. Um, he's got four goals in his last four Premier League games, the 23 games before that, he only had four goals and he's now got six goals and assists in his last four Premier League games as well. I think he's a striker. I'm going to keep banging the drum. That's just where, for me, he should be playing his football. Yeah, I, I said last week, I think there's more clarity when he plays in this role. 100%. And as I say, he, he's, it's almost like we're coming towards the business end of the season and it's bringing the best out of him, James. I, and I think over the last few weeks, he's really has stepped up. There was a lot of, um, he's been under a lot of scrutiny this season and that £65 million down the drain song now is, is really sort of starting to sing out and have relevance, isn't it? Because he's doing everything to defy the fact that he is a, uh, you know, he's worth that sort of money now, I think, for, for the club. And I think he dragged us over the line tonight. As I said to you, I thought he was really at it tonight. Um, he was good in the duels. He was coming short. He was, he, he was running in behind. He was... He really wanted it tonight, I could tell. Yeah. And, and he was a handful for them all night. And I think he worked really hard for the team. And he's, as I say, what I like about him, he's sort of like that target man. He's, he can play that false nine position. He can drop short. He's a combination of, yeah, he is. of what I thought Arteta really bought him for in the first place. Totally agree. Now, you talked about there being issues with the left-hand side in this game. And the thing is, for the fact we won, we're obviously very happy. And it's eight wins in a row and we're top of the league. There's a million positive things we could say. And we've... I think the right-hand side and the, you know, some of the performances, and there's still more positives to go into. We've touched on a lot of that. The left-hand side, there was something missing. We know Martinelli unavailable because of a gashed leg. Now, what we've got here is two sort of graphics from whoscored.com. One is Arsenal's against uh, Brentford at home, and the other is Sheffield United away early in the week. So two different performances the same week. But as you can see, 42% of Arsenal's attacks went down the right-hand side against Brentford. It's 37 against Sheffield United. So the biggest imbalance comes in the way we were much more right-sided because against Sheffield United, 34% to the 37% still went down the left. So what was the reason for that? Because something tells me, just through, just on paper it looks right, that if you're going to have a Kivior who is a centre-back, who isn't going to really always offer with though we did talk about on the last tactical inside he can do that then what you've got to have is a runner on that left yeah and the right hand side has, has both it has, a, it has runners in Saka and White the left hand side doesn't really have runners in either Kivio or Trossard and you can see that everything fell inside in fact the most option we got in terms of width outside was Kivio whipping balls into the box some weren't bad but we miss Martinelli, and I wonder how we address that balance because Arteta clearly thought that was a problem because he brought on Reese Nelson. Suddenly, it looked like we had a little bit of pace going down that side. Yeah, I think um, Gabriel Martinelli, with his direct running, um, offers us something different on that side to what yeah. we have on the right hand side. I think it's hard to replicate the skill set that Martinelli's got because basically, it's just he's just a great athlete who suddenly yeah. he can put the burners on and go away from people. Um, and I think. You know, you're always going to miss a player like that. Trossard is a great footballer and I love him in the false nine role. I love him when he plays inside, but he can't do what uh, Martinelli does. I think Brentford would have been aware of that. 
Uh, and I think, consequently, I think they were always looking to switch their players over to the right-hand side because they knew that were where most of our Arsenal attacks were going to go. So uh, I think that unbalance probably affected the performance of the team tonight. And while we struggled to create at times, I still thought we did pretty much everything that we tried to do. There were some nice moments, build-up <coughs> play. Uh, second half, we were pushing. Uh, Declan Rice had a great effort that came off the outside of the bar. Uh, Gabriel had a, a header from a set play. Uh, which was cleared off the line, but I, I just felt we didn't have the, the opportunity to sort of like, apart from that one moment in the first half when Ramsdale played the long throw out and set Tross out of the way, which he then overbalanced yeah. and lost the ball, but we didn't have that dynamic that, uh, on yeah. that side. And I think it's something that I'm hoping that he's going to, you know, be back for that Porter game. Yeah, I hope so too. Now, another unfortunate negative was the Aaron Ramsdale era. Now, before everyone goes, oh, come on, guys, you're being too harsh. Yes, totally acknowledge that. He hasn't played a lot of football. Confidence will be shot. He'll be very rusty. I take all that. I give him credit for two massive saves. I know that you definitely want to give him credit for that. I thought they were big, big saves and very, very good saves. I also think his distribution, mainly from his throws, superb. Cool. Let's put that all to one side. For me, the error was horrendous. It was really bad. And it's not that players can't make errors. Raya did it against Man City and Alvarez nearly scored in a similar way. Raya hasn't been perfect since arriving at Arsenal. And now look at the way we're talking about him as a goalkeeper. Mistakes happen. They don't define a player. However, where I get really, really, really wound up is, I said on the watch on, for me there are moments in games where almost philosophy has to go out the window because common sense needs to take over. Now that might not be the message from Mikel Arteta, what the hell do I know sitting on this couch, you know, in hindsight. But I just have always felt that the first minute of the game, nothing silly, and the last minute of the half, nothing silly. And that's true of both halves. And for me, the minute, you know, we had our rhythm disrupted because of a head injury and we're settling, Ramsdor should recognise we are in added time, we're about to get to half time. I don't need to overthink this. I just need to get rid of it and make sure. And the thing was, Saliba was there. And actually, he had time to still pick a pass. He just took too long and the execution was poor. But the minute he realised he didn't know what he was doing, he had to just get rid of it. And he didn't. I'm really disappointed because for me, that is a lapse of concentration that could have really hurt us. I think he, um, to me, it was showed a lack of confidence. Uh, and also Maybe, the fact yeah. that he has not been in the team this season, right? So I think when I say a lack of confidence, I, what I put that down to is throughout that first half, mostly when he got the ball, he was kicking long, right? So when Raya plays, he invites the pressure and then he distributes it out, right? So that's, that's the, uh, what Arteta wanted Raya for over Ramsdale, I think, is that ability, calmness on the ball to be able to pass it, his starting position, he, yeah. he comes for more crosses and all the rest of it. So he's a more of a calm goalkeeper, uh, and that sort of like I think spreads to the defenders in front of him. I thought right from the start because I was watching him tonight because I sit up right high, looking across that penalty box um, uh, first half. Uh, that, that's my position, right? So I, I was watching him tonight, and I just felt everything he just was looking to kick. So when that ball went back to him mm -hmm. at the end of that first half, he was going to kick it. What I can understand was why he took two or three touches, or he yeah. wanted to take touches, right? Because Saliba was the obvious pass to the right, which he could have made. And I think Raya, if he had been in goal, he would have made that pass to the right. But for some reason, he wanted to take the touch, and then he wanted to kick it. And Wissa came from nowhere to close him down, I get that. But I just thought that lack of confidence in being able to pass out to his defenders, I think, was evident in the yeah. game. I just think the fact that he's not used to playing with the team this season would have and the reason why that was so. And I just thought that um, in that moment, it, it epitomised, you know, his lack of confidence in doing the things that I think Arteta wants him to do. So whether he was told by Arteta, I want you to play out, or whether yeah. he was told to, to kick it long all the time, we'd never know. But I just think in that moment, he, he, was, um, he, he made the wrong option. Yeah. You are right, the end of the first half, uh, there was a player down actually and they took the free kick, it went up there. He just had to clear it um, and kick it out. But for some reason, he dallied on it. And Brentford, who didn't look like scoring in that first half, to be honest, were then back at 1-1. Yeah, very true. It was true. a big moment, but I will give him credit. Yeah, I thought saves. to come out second half and show uh, mental strength, because he had made the mistake. Let's face it, he probably knew this would be his last game for the club. Yeah. And uh, if this had been a 1-1 draw today, James, and that had been his mistake that cost us the two points, that would have been something that he'd have to live with forever, right? Mm. 
The thing I like about the team, though, is that when he made the mistakes, Saliba and Gabriel were straight over to him, yeah. to console him, and as he walked off, all the subs came over to him. You know, showed the bond in this team, right? Um, and I thought, Havert said in his interview after the game, we're going to, players make mistakes and we want to turn it around second half. We were determined to turn it around for him. Yeah. And they did that in the end. And I thought he showed great mental strength because he made a great save from a, a, a half volley from Tony from 40 yards. We had to adjust his body shape in the air to turn that around the post. And then he made a good flying save from a header. So didn't quite redeem what he did in the first half because that was a bad error. And he probably wanted the ground to open up and swallow him basically. Yeah. But he redeemed himself with two good saves in the second half and he was part of a winning team in probably his last ever Arsenal performance. Yeah, might well be if everyone stays fit. It certainly looks that way. And you're right about William Saliba and Gabriel going over to, you know, uh, you know, support him and lift him up after that era. William Saliba. Every player say, makes mistakes, don't they? Everyone. Well, William Saliba says this on mm. BN Sport. He said, everyone makes mistakes. The last two months I made two mistakes and my teammates saved me. So we have to be together like this. Second half, he saved us because they had three good chances. That's a good mentality of the team. I think that's brilliant from Saliba. Not just the words and respect and the, you know, the, the, the sportsmanship shown by Saliba and uh, Gabriel to, to sort of help their teammate and the togetherness. But their performances were immense, immaculate as well. Those two were phenomenal. I'll, I'll, we could do a whole show on those two. I'll tell you one thing about Saliba tonight. He handled Tony superbly. Yeah, yeah, I thought was. in the duels, you know, he, he was very strong in the duels. Tony often... He got him to go to ground yeah. without fouling him, and that's an yeah. achievement in itself. Saliba was really good tonight. Yeah, I totally agree. Both and Gabriel on the yellow most of that game, immense. Can it end on Declan Rice's numbers as well? Because he was terrific. Of course, he got the goal, which we mentioned. Three shots in the game, five crosses, one of them hitting the crossbar. What an effort that would have been. Well, what an effort it was. What a goal it would have been. Five crosses, five long passes completed, 33%. Uh, sorry, 33, I was about to say 33% of passes completed. That'd be <laughs> appalling. 33 passes completed, six out of eight aerial draw ones, and he won 100% of his tackles as well. Graham, take it away with the uh, roundup stats as Arsenal go back to the top of the league. I'm looking forward to these. Go on. Right, just a few for you tonight, James. Uh, Arsenal have now scored most headed goals in the league this season with 16. We like By it. By the way, Brentford have conceded most with 17. Just uh, throw that in there. Arsenal have now won eight consecutive games while scoring plus two goals each time for the first time since January to March 2004. Say that again, sorry. Arsenal have now won eight consecutive games while scoring plus two goals. Oh, got it. Two or more goals in the game, right. Well, oh, yeah, nice. two, or goals, yeah. Yeah, two or more goals in the game. So yeah. Forrest was a 2-1 win, but it was two. Since 2004? Yeah, 2000, January, March 2004, the last time we did that. Guess what happened that season? What happened that season? We were invincible. One exactly. Day. Arsenal are the only fourth side to win each of their first eight Premier League games of a calendar year. The previous three are Man United in 2009, Liverpool in 2020 and Man City in 2021. And while we're talking about uh, winning the league, all those three teams went on to win the title th in those years. Uh, mm -hmm. I love this one to end with because I'm not exactly a great admirer of Sami and Nazari, so I, I take great pleasure in reading this one out. Finally, Ben White provided his seventh and eighth assists in this game and now has more Premier League assists than Sami and Nazari. What a brilliant stat that, to end the show. And that's it, mate. What a brilliant stat. Everyone, a big thank you for joining us. A big thank you to Graham as well. It's been an absolute pleasure discussing a different kind of Arsenal win from the seven we won before. But the key point is eight in a row, as you mentioned there, Graham. And we keep hearing City, Liverpool, Klopp, Wilder, they have an ability to put runs together. We're putting one together ourselves. And it's the final game we've just had before the international break in the Premier League. It's all eyes on Porto now. Previews coming out across Monday. And of course, we'll be keeping up to date with every kick of a ball on, uh, on Tuesday during the match. Special Forever Arsenal will be live as well at 10pm Sunday night. So if you're watching this before then, do go and join us for an amazing live show. Wake, wake judges up for that, by the way. I will wake judges up. I'm sure we might watch this show. <laughs> Big thanks to Graham. Big thanks to all of you. Catch you soon. <laughs>